Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in, God bless you. Let's get our Instagram family in this morning. Hey, good morning. We are celebrating. Come on, Holy Ghost. Hey, let's go, let's go. Real love. Good morning, Zoomers. Good morning, free conference call. Yes, good morning. I bless you. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Ursula Deborah Brown. Good bless. Hey, Gwendolyn Foster. Good morning, girl. Ursula, God bless y'all. Hey, come on in. Tanya Watkins, Neil Shadassi. Let's go, Pastor John J. Davis. Hey. Yes. Good morning, free conference call. Good morning, IG. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Bless y'all. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come my own in. Woo yes, yes, yes. Come fill me up, Holy Ghost. Woo yes. Welcome to the School of Holy Spirit. We are here live. Like from Detroit, Michigan, we're so excited. Yes, yes, yes. Like that and share as you are coming in. Thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing. Oh, yes. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Yes. Only this I see. Yes, consume. Hey, this is my life. Hey. Hey. Consume completely. This is my one big dot. Come on, Chandler. Good morning. <laughs> Let's go, Maverick City. Hey. Hey. Come on, Bree. Alton, come on, y'all sing it for me. No. Come on, come on in. This is the School of Holy Spirit. And I am Bishop Coletta Devon. And I am a pneumatologist. And I'm so glad that you've joined us this morning. Good morning, Mama Karen Daughtry. Three years. Yep. This would have been day two. We actually launched it on a Sunday. And this would have been day two, which would have been a Monday, 2020. Woo! Good morning, Miss Sheena. Hey. Yes. Come on, Shelton. You know what it is, right? Cut to completely. Oh, my God. Fill me up, Holy Ghost. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Yvonne. God bless you, baby. Thank you. Pat Kelly, good morning, Deacon Ella Newby. Lily Thomas Ava, good morning. Yoshi, Vanessa, God bless you. Kai Kai, good morning. Good morning, Patricia A. Scott. You've been with me every day for three years. Hey, yes, yes, yes. That song just takes me exactly where I want us to go today. Hallelujah. Let us just put that in our hearts. And put that in our minds. Fill me up, Holy Ghost. Praise God. This is my one desire to be consumed completely. This is my one desire to be a living fire. Consumed completely. That is the word of the Lord. That we would be living fires, embers. That we would be on fire and that wherever we go, whatever it is that God uses us to do, <clears throat> wherever the mountain is, that this is what we do. We change the trajectory. We offer the wisdom of Holy Spirit. We give uh, the answers to the problems. We meet the needs. Good morning, Dr. Juliet. Thank you for the boxes of tea. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Vandela Hayes. Good morning, Sandra Robinson, Overseer Ryan, Picard, Dr. Patricia James, my sister Gloria Jean Pitts, Janet Rivers Richardson, Sandra Coleman. Listen, we are getting ready for Azusa. I want you to hear this. Azusa 2023 will be like none other. Azusa 2023 will be like none other that you have experienced. Come on, Zoomers and IG. I'm going to need you all to be a part of what God is doing. Let me get y'all straight in here. This is my IG family right here. Uh, listen, you don't want to miss uh, Pentecost weekend, May 26, 27, and 28. We are going, listen, listen, you got to hear this. So a Holy Spirit drops this in my spirit and says, this is the, you need to expand, keep expanding, keep expanding. You're not going to do camp meeting this year. And so many people were asking me, you know, are you going to do camp meeting? What are you going to do? And I was like, I can't, I'm waiting to hear from God. And so Holy Spirit said, no, you're not doing camp meeting. You're doing Pentecost. I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> and so uh, as Holy Spirit began to, to uh, drop it in my spirit, uh, it was so very clear to me that uh, uh, it was going to be the three the three day weekend, and that Monday is Memorial Day, so a lot of people are off that Monday, so they can kind of slide in and don't have to rush back to uh, work. So I began to call the hotels to get uh, hotel information and found out that that's the techno weekend in the city of Detroit. Now, I didn't know that, right? <clears throat> and so the same weekend of Pentecost, uh, May 26, 27, 28, is techno weekend in Detroit. That's big, all techno music people are downtown at Hart Plaza. So it's a jam, right? But I said, Holy Spirit, what are you doing? He said, I want, my sound, I want my sound in the city of Detroit that weekend. And I said, well, all right then, <laughs> hallelujah. I don't want that sound, that's not my sound. I want my sound in the city that weekend. And so praise be to God, that's what we're going to do. I'm opening it up to you. We do have a hotel now, praise God. I'll get that information out to you. But I want you to go ahead now and get your tickets, your airfare. That is Memorial Day weekend or rent your cars, okay? Now, <clears throat> it will be streamed. So the Friday service will be streamed. Most of the Saturday will be streamed. And of course, Sunday services will be streamed. But praise God, I'm expecting, I'm expecting you all to flood the city. I need you to preach. I need a choir. If you want to be in the Pentecost weekend choir, I'm going to need some choir folks, some singers, right? We've got the musician, we've got the staff, but I'm, I want a choir that weekend. I want an Azusa choir. <clears throat> Praise God. And so Hotel St. Regis, which is normally our nearest hotel, is jam-packed. So you will be at the Radisson in Southfield. We have the rooms ready for you, just waiting on the uh, code and waiting on the link. I should have it today, which means I can let you know tomorrow. <clears throat> Excuse me, but Hotel St. Regis is normally our hotel, but they said, Bishop, we're booked <laughs> because of the tecto. So it's okay, all is well, all is well. I want an Azusa choir. So I'm asking for singers to come. I'm going to ask my worship leaders and my music director to begin to gather people uh, for, that, for that choir. I spoke with my favorite choir director on yesterday and got him committed to come in, to train, to teach. We've got the band. We've got everything in place. All you got to do now, you got to come in maybe a little earlier. If you're going to be in the choir, you got to come in at least Thursday for rehearsals. And we're going to be singing some wonderful, good old Pentecostal songs, Azusa Street music. Um, it's going to be amazing. Now, listen, I need you to begin to pray. 
I need you to begin to pray with me and pray for me. I want to see people heal. I want to see bona fide healings. I want to see bona fide miracles, signs, and wonders. I want people who have never been spirit baptized to be there. Dr. Agba, I sure hope you can come. I need preachers and teachers. I need altar workers. Now, we've got a great team, but I believe for the massive crowd. Those of you that are in the school of Holy Spirit, I want you to come, not just to see, but come to participate, come to work, come and teach, come and preach, come and prophesy, come and lay hands on the sick. It's going to be impossible for one little girl like me to do it all. So I'm asking you to come and be a part. The other thing is bring your children, bring the children to Pentecost, bring your grandchildren, bring your nieces and your nephews. That Friday, they probably ain't gonna learn nothing in school anyway. Y'all get in the car and get to Detroit. First service is Friday evening, doors open at five. Intercessors, I need you to arise. <clears throat> I need evangelists. I need, I need, uh, yes, bona fide miracles. This is May 26th to May 28th. Make Azusa great again. And that can only happen if School of Holy Spirit is pushing this. This is where it began. And this is how we push it. We have to push it. Now, the cathedral is ready. We are rocking and ready. We are rocking and ready. All right. But we will need some support from those of you that are a part of the school of Holy Spirit and our network leaders. If you can come in, <clears throat> network people, if you can work streets, we're going down up in there and we're going to make our own sound. We're going to put out flyers. We're going to put out all types of stuff. We are having flyers made. I believe that this is going to be an event that's going to rock the city. So doors open on Friday night at five o'clock. Thank you, Dr. Skimmer. She said, I'm excited. And then Saturday, doors open at 12 noon. We'll go from 12 until there's no, there's no close time. So from five until, until uh, Saturday morning, we might go all the way. We don't know. And then noonday, Saturday, the doors open. And then, of course, we go all day. And then Sunday, Sunday, of course, doors open at 9.30, and we began praying at 10 a.m., and we'll go until we're finished. So you want to be a part of Pentecost weekend. Make Azusa great again. That's at 1745 East Grand Boulevard. Now, <clears throat> those of you that are flying in, you can always rent a car. Uh, amen. You might have to stay a little bit farther uh, than downtown. Uh, because there are so many uh, different uh, persons downtown that have occupied the hotels because of Techno Weekend. But we're going to put our sound and they're going to hear our sound, the sound of Pentecost. Hey, good morning. I'm Bishop Coletta Javon, and I am excited to bring you the School of Holy Spirit. Today, uh, three years ago, Praise God. April 27, 2020 was our first Monday. We kicked it off on a Sunday, uh, which was the 26th, 2020. And then today, 27, would have been the Monday of 2020. It was our first week launching School of Holy Spirit, which we thought would have been 40 days. And here we are now, three years into teaching, which says to me, uh, that there is a great thirst and there is a great hunger for information on Holy Spirit. And then uh, next year, by the grace of God, uh, we have already received uh, the vision for what's next. And that's the Center, International Center uh, for Holy Spirit Studies. Uh, we are procuring a property uh, near our church and we are looking at uh, some things that we are going to do to build that space up so that people will come uh, from the north, south, east, and west and learn of Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm looking, I'm just praying in the spirit to get all of the strategies and all of the instructions 
uh, as we move forward. But this is exciting. This is exciting. Thank you, Ava, pleading the blood and declaring the dunamis power, the power of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Good morning to, uh, to the cathedral family. Good morning, God. God, God bless you. Good morning, uh, Denise. God bless all of you. Listen, we are studying Holy Spirit and me. <laughs> Holy Spirit and me. <clears throat> Holy Spirit and me. We want, we want, praise God, uh, Holy Spirit to deal with all of my parts, my whole spirit, my whole body, my whole soul. We want Holy Spirit's influence and we want impact in our entire beings. We don't just want Holy Spirit uh, in our dance or in our shout. We want Holy Spirit in our entire being. That spirit, soul, and body. Why? Well, Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, around verse 21, uh, that we would be vessels of honor. Hallelujah. Somebody put that in the chat, that we would be vessels of honor. Thank you, Charmaine. She said, I am grateful. Praise God for Pentecost in a pandemic. Amen. Charmaine said, I didn't know what I needed. <laughs> Good morning, Denise Curry. Good morning. God bless you, Diane. God bless you. Diane says, I became connected this year and have been blessed. Thank you, uh, Diane D. Moy Mitchell. God bless you. Praise God. Somebody put that in the chat. Holy Spirit and me. Holy Spirit and me. Boaz, that we would be vessels of honor that our spirit, soul, and body. Carmilla has been writing poetry that's amazing. Uh, Monica Monet, that we would be vessels of honor. Hey, Tish, baby. Uh, yes, thank you so much. This is what the Holy Spirit gave me. Watch this. Good morning, son. God bless you, Bishop. That, uh, I love you so much. Pray for your heart this morning. Pray for you heart this morning. You and Danielle, yeah. Um, Praise God. Um, I, I was thinking um, this morning when we read the text, and I've got all my books here. I'm just trying to get myself organized, and I'm writing this dissertation. But praise the Lord. You guys are praying for me. It's working. Don't stop. So 2 Timothy. I want you to see this. 2 Timothy. <laughs> she always tells me that I'm leaving my faith in the earth. That's so, that's so deep and heavy. 2 Timothy 2 and 21. 2 Timothy 2 and 21. Let's start at 20. So in a great house, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but there are vessels of wood and clay. Some are for honor and some are for dishonor. All right. And so Here's what uh, 21 says. Therefore, if a man cleanses himself from the latter, which is dishonor, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master's work. Now, the old King James says that you will be vessels of honor, sanctified and fit for the master's use. I, I want to, if, if I was to take a text, <laughs> if I was to take a subject this morning, <laughs> I would ask the question, are you fit for the master's use? Good God Almighty, my God. Let's read it out of the message. Thank you, Wendy. I want us to hear this out of the message. In a well-furnished kitchen, there are not only crystal goblets and silver platters, but waste cans and compost buckets. My God. Some containers are used to serve fine meals. <laughs> and others, listen, listen, Bishop, others to take out the garbage. So you become the kind of container 
that God can use to present any and every kind of gift to his guests for their blessings. Wow. <laughs> that, 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 whoa. The New Living Translation says, if you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Good God Almighty. Are you ready? Are you fit for the master's use? Now, a lot of information has gone out about sanctification, but it only deals with the outer man. But when we began to look at these temperaments and we began to examine the weaknesses, the undesirable parts of us, then we must say, okay, now wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe he's not just talking about my body. Maybe he's not just talking about what I wear. Maybe he's not just talking about where I go. Maybe what makes me unfit is my own temperament. Mm. How many opportunities has my temperament forced me to abort? How many, how many doors, how many ways, how, 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 how much have I not been able to grasp or been able to lay my hands on because I've got some temperament flaw. I've got some flaws in my temperament. I've got some undesirable parts inside of my temperament that makes me unfit for the master's use. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't, but I argue, I fuss, I hold grudges, I, I spit out venom, I, I, I operate in uh, hates. I don't have strategies or plans. I, and so maybe what's not making me pure is not seen to the natural eye. But because of my temperament, I have missed moments or I have broken fellowships or unfair finished, unfinished assignments and projects. I don't gamble. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't whore around. I don't do any of those things, but I'm moody. I can be dark and pessimistic. I can be uncouth and loud without boundaries. I speak my mind, but my mind ain't always for the hearing of others. Come on now, I, I, want, I want somebody to, to hear what I'm saying. So fit for the master's use is more than what I do and more of who I am. Oh, come on somebody. Woo, my, my flaws, my, my weaknesses. So every temperament has strengths and weaknesses. Now, Holy Spirit and me, Holy Spirit and me, Holy Spirit and me. Not, not, not my public self, not my public me, but my private. So this now, watch this. This is 
to help you understand why you act the way you do, why you respond, why you feel the way you do sometimes, and to give Holy Spirit permission to help temper your temperaments. Ooh, come on, somebody, come on. So, so, so when you are fearful, do you get mean? When you're fearful, do you become dark and pessimistic? But you're really not a bad person. But fear, fear, does it cause you to be doubtful? Does it cause you to ice? Can have fits of rage and anger. And although your leadership skills are great, your anger level is too high. Melancholies, and we're dealing with melancholies this week. You are tremendously gifted, tremendously gifted. Nobody wants to live in a world without a melancholy. But as faithful as you are as a friend, you are suspicious and unforgiving. And so listen, listen, listen. This is where we have to move into now being fit. Because I want to be a vessel of honor. I want to be a vessel of honor that is fit for the master's use. I don't want to just be saved. I want to be used. Glory to God. Woo, the old hymns say, use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw, draw me nearer every day. Lord, I'm willing just to run on all the way. And if I falter, hey. While I'm trying, don't be angry, Lord, let me stay. Because I'm willing, Lord, to go all the way. I'm, I want to be used. I'm willing. I want to be used. I want to be fit for your use. So, so what is it about my temperament? What is it about my, not personality, but my temperament, which drives my personality? What is it that is causing me to be unfit? That causes me to not prosper. That causes me to, to not be consistent. What is it that causes me to speak out of turn and always need to have the last word? What is this that is in me? Oh, God. Whoa, what is it that, that causes me to be so hard to please, to be so pessimistic? Why do I depress easy? Why am I so analytical and looking for everything to be so perfect? And when it's not, I get fearful. What is that? What is that? <laughs> Sheila said, I know that song. Come on. <laughs> I want to be fit for the master's use. So the melancholic is the gift of beauty to the body of Christ. The melancholy is the gift of beauty. They, they are your planners. They are your musicians, your designers, your, your beautiful minded people. They are given to lists and charts. So they are great in the area of finances. They are great uh, when it comes to analytics and details oh my god the 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 melancholy you don't want to live in a world without a melancholy but all at the same time come on with me come come go with me now melancholics <laughs> can be moody can be unforgiving can be difficult to please can be very, very difficult to please, very hard to satisfy. Nothing is ever right in the melancholic's mind unless it's perfect. It, it can't just be good. It has to be perfect. And it has to meet a standard that only they know about. And so if it doesn't meet that standard, they can become very fearful because the one thing about a melancholic is they never want 
to fail. And they never want to be seen as a failure or imperfect in any way. Melancholics are easily offended. Melancholics are easily offended and extremely suspicious. Now you gotta hear me. This is not, this is not uh, to beat up on anybody, but this is to help us to see where Holy Spirit has to work in our lives. This is where you have to see how Holy Spirit works in your life. You have to be able to know where you need Holy Spirit. And the thing about the melancholy is as, as gifted as they are, as, as analytical, as perfecting as they are, they drive everybody else nuts because their standard of perfection is not easily attainable by everyone else. And so they work from a place of perfection and not from a place of excellence. Oh my God, come on, come on, come on. I need somebody to hear me. They're very respectful. They are planners to the nth degree. They're very scheduled, but they can fall into resentment. They can fall into the habit of being resentful because they are so creative and they are so orderly and they are so detailed. If the slightest deviation occurs, it throws them sometimes in a panic. Because remember the melancholic sees in living color. The melancholy hears all of the sounds. You know, if you were to uh, look at Lucifer, Lucifer was indeed a melancholic. And I know you don't want to be identified <laughs> by Lucifer. But I, notice I didn't say Satan, I said Lucifer. Remember that Lucifer was a, an angel that adorned the throne of God. And all of the talent and all of the gifting and all of the music was in that angel. And it was so much that came out of that angel that was so glorious that God actually assigned Lucifer, not Satan, but Lucifer to the throne because all of the sounds, all of the gifts, all of the beauty and the glory and everything that was needed for God's inner court was in Lucifer. Now, I don't know how uh, it happened. I don't know how God created that being with all that music and all that beauty until he got offended. And this is what you got to learn about the melancholic. That melancholic temperament is probably the most needed to beautify the world. But if that melancholic ever gets offended or gets suspicious or becomes uh, wounded in any way, that melancholic can slip over in to a dark, dark place. And as rich and as powerful and as valuable as that melancholic is, is also as dubious. The one that held you up in high honor, the one that honored you, the one that respected you, the one that loved you, is also the one that will try to murder you. Melancholic is something, but so need it, so need it. And so Lucifer, who had all of this talent, all of this gifting, 
everything that was in that was needed around the throne of God was in Lucifer. Lucifer, the anointed cherub. Lucifer. Lucifer was the anointed cherub. Oh my God. That adorned the throne of God. And nobody could do the job like Lucifer could do it. And for millions and millions of years, come on now, Lucifer was in charge of the beauty. Lucifer was in charge so much so that Lucifer is called the morning star. Come on, somebody. Woo, Lucifer, the morning star. Lucifer, now, I want you to understand, I'm not talking about uh, 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 Marvel movies. I'm talking about Lucifer, the angel. I'm talking about Lucifer, who was created by God as an angel that was so gifted. Oh, my God that was so gifted, so, so gifted that all Lucifer had to do, I don't know how he did it, but music was so in him. Now, Lucifer, the word means shining one, light bearer, all right? So Lucifer, was not dark or depressed or in any way discouraged. It wasn't until Luke fell. Now, let's go. I'm going to take you to some Old Testament scripture because this is the melancholic <laughs> that we have to look at. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter number 14, Isaiah. And so I'm, I'm talking to you gifted creator, creatives. Those of you that are creatives. Now, you're very good at serving. You're very good at self-sacrificing. So nursing, um, those kinds of careers uh, that teaching, uh, teachers, uh, that that require the heart, all right? You are very analytical. You are very, very gifted in that area. You are self-sacrificing. You are the child that loves, the child that cares. You're the child that that feels deeply. You're the child that that takes care of your mom and takes care of your the older people in your family. You're the one that is always looking out for someone. <laughs> you are very, very giving, very giving. So the creatives that are here, the creatives that are here, and some of you may have creative children that you need to pay attention to. They're the ones that sulk, they get mad and fold their arms and go in the corner, don't want to come out their rooms. All right, and don't want to, to um, don't want to, don't want to repent. Melancholics, and I'm gonna show you that they they are strongly, 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 strongly. And when they when they are in that space of strength, they don't like to repent and they don't like to own uh, anything. Jonathan says, "I'm that child." Now, Lanita, you are right. His light turned to darkness. So let's go to. Isaiah chapter number 14. Isaiah chapter number 14. And, you know, I would tell you to read all of it, but let's just look at verse 12. Isaiah 14 and 12. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Murphy's Law. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground. How you are cut down. How you have weakened the nation. For well, you have said in your heart, watch this, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. 
I would get like the most high that he brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. And those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man that trembled, that made the earth tremble and shook the heavens and the kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house for prisoners. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Listen to me very carefully. Ooh, Deborah says, the professed melancholics that I know you would never know. They seem to be jovial, yet behind closed doors, the melancholy. Wow. Wow. It depends on what their second temperament is. If their second temperament is a, is a sanguine, they can be very jovial. They can be very outgoing. We talked about that sanguine uh, last, the last lessons. We, we dealt with that sanguine. But if that, if the melancholy has choleric or has sanguine or even phlegmatic, it's a blend. <laughs> Thea says, I live in a house full of melancholics. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. Kimberly said, I was that child, but my father wouldn't tolerate that kind of behavior. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the day star, the light, the, the one with light has now become the darkness. Now, I just, I just want to share this with you because when we deal with Holy Spirit and me, th these are the areas that I believe make us unfit for the master's use. Melancholics can be caught up in pride. Why? Because they're so freaking creative. They're so creative. And in their own eyes, they are perfect. <laughs> and so now Lucifer is no longer known as Lucifer. But now Lucifer is known as Satan. Now Jesus says, thank you, Pastor Will, William uh, Lamont, when he says uh, to them in Luke 10, when they come back, he said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from the sky. Woo! And when the melancholy falls, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying to you. This is when we really need Holy Spirit to help us. I don't know why we don't want Holy Spirit to help us in the area of our iniquities, in the area of our arrogance. The melancholic is so creative that literally if a melancholic was in charge of the world, it would all be decorated, it would all be beautiful. There'd be music coming out of uh, out of the, the, the street lights. It would be amazing. Because they don't take criticism well. And they don't like correction. So you may have a gifted child that brings you all A's and it's, it's superlative in creatives. Creative, whether it's music or arts or design or decor. You have, a, you have a melancholic child that is always fixing things, doesn't like their food to touch. I don't want my peas with my rice. I don't want my rice with my salmon. I don't want that's that melancholic child. All right. They don't, I don't want anything to, to, to touch, right? Melancholic is the child. It's, it, everything's got to be perfect, perfect. And so you need to know, you need to know how to raise this child. You need to know if you are that melancholic uh, person that's dark and can get wounded easily and hard to let go of a grudge, hard to release it, hard to take ownership, grieves insistently, can grieve, but at the same time does not want to be alone. <laughs> Because they realize that their creativity is useless unless it is shared. Faithful says, I have a child. Wow. My nephew, God, that is the melancholy. Regina, wow. Come on in here. Come on, IG. Come on. This, I want you to see how this works. 
The tissues that I'm being seen, I'm called out. Come on. But where does Holy Spirit need access to that temperament so that you will be fit for the master's use? Wow. Very, 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 very good. This is so, so good. I need you to hear this because Lucifer was the son of the morning and became the spirit of darkness. This is why Lucifer, now Satan, knows how to trans, how to uh, transmit himself as an angel of light. Because he was, he was the angel of light. He knows how to change from dark to light. This is his greatest trick of deception. It's because he was the angel of light. He was the light bearer. He was the shining one. Woo, hallelujah. Are y'all listening to this? Are you, are you hearing this? Wow, wow, wow. I, I need you to hear this because I don't, even in leadership, as we are assigning people to assignments and giving people things to do, we have to be mindful of their temperaments. You have to be mindful of how you position people, where you put them. You have to, you have to know, okay, you are a segment. I need you out front. But I also know that you are short shelf. That means your shelf life is short. That means that you are not going to be doing this forever. You're going to need another because you're so, you're so gifted. And so you're going to be distracted. So I might need a melancholy to come in and now give details. The same ones don't have time for that. Y'all give details. I need an analytical person that can now make sure that the bills are paid, make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. But, but you also have to make, be mindful that that melancholy wants everything so perfect, but they can, it, it, will ne it will never be able to be that perfect. And so they'll never be pleased. No matter what happens, no matter what occurs, no matter the outcome, they're never pleased. Melancholics are the hardest people to please. And so if you are married to a melancholic, if you are working with a melancholic, if your boss is a melancholic, if your leader is a melancholic, understand that the melancholic temperament is hard to please. And so it may not be you. It may not be what you're doing or what you're not doing. It's just that that melancholy strives for perfection, not excellence. Unless Holy Spirit has tempered that temperament to allow the melancholic to think outside of their own box. Woo, come on, come on, come on. Listen to this. Deborah says, wow, I am a sanguine and I am married to a melancholy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that could be a great blend because the sanguine is, 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 is outgoing and exciting and, and, but does not like details. And the melancholic wants all the details they can get. And so there's a great tension there. That's that's excellent. <laughs> Woo, come on, somebody. I'm trying to teach you how Holy Spirit, thou says, my daughter's Malachi, how Holy Spirit, watch this, wants to make us fit for the master's use. Yvonne says, I'm a whole Malachi. Yes, you are. My husband is a sanguine. Wow. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> I would not want to be in that conversation. How 
Hallelujah. I would say I'm confused. You are not confused. We don't have nobody confused up in here. <laughs> Holy Spirit and me. Glory to God. Holy Spirit. And so uh, when, when we look at the, 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 the angel that has music in them, music in them, oh my God. That all of the, all of the, all of the sounds, all of the instruments, all of, of it was, was in him. That's, that's powerful. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. So when you think about the sound of music, that's melancholics behind that. You look at these composers, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, you look at Chopin. These guys, these were, these were melancholics. And they were given to depression. They were given to bouts of moodiness and darkness. Michelangelo, the designer, the artist that, that, that is uh, uh, still work, is worth billions of dollars. And every melancholic could be wealthy. But their temperament, as gifted as they are, to have, prevents them because they can't work hardly with nobody. And, and so money opportunities and things that come to them because of their giftedness to monetize their gift. They, 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 they're hesitant because underneath that gifted melancholy is the spirit of fear. The fear of Failure. Cheryl Wilson said, I'm a melancholic and I'm a supervisor on my job. God help your staff. <laughs> Woo, look at this. Vanita says, I've been composing music. None of those persons were wealthy because they're so perfectionist driven. Nobody can work with them. Their music did not become something that was honored until most of them died and you should be the wealthiest of us all because you're the gifted of us all you're more creative than the sanguine you're more you're more powerful than the clarity you're absolutely more stable and analytical than the phlegmatic but because you drive such a hard line as a perfectionist it causes you to most times not have the wealth that you should have. Whew. All of my band directors and jazz directors, all these composers, all of these wonderful gifted worship singers, Darlene Zeck and, and uh, 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 Erica, not Erica, but uh, what is the girl, Miranda Curtis and Tasha Cobbs, these are all melancholics. They're all melancholics. You look at all of the Barbara Streisand. You know, you look at uh, 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 what Lisa, that other girl that I love. Uh, she's Canadian. Oh my God, Patty LaBelle. All these people, they're melancholics. When you look at the arts world, the world of arts, those that that uh, that are in on in stage works, and they those the creatives, they are melancholics. You look at a Tyler Perry. You look at all of these people, these are melancholics. <laughs> and some have learned, I'm sure, whatever his secondary uh, temperament is, some have learned to work the system. He's probably more choleric than anything. I'm trying to help us to see. Vanita says, I'm sitting on a CD as we speak. And so the melancholic is so gifted, so gifted. David, and we're going to talk about David in our next lesson. David, the melancholic, oh my God, the creative, the sensitive one, the one that could hear from God, the one that was after God's own heart. David, the melancholic, who could go in and hear from God, the melancholic, that wrote the Psalms and was the worship leader, the priest, the king, the worship leader of the Old Testament. 
I can look at Elijah, who was the prophet of prophets, and most prophets are melancholics, as most evangelists are sanguines. Most apostles are clerics. Are you listening to me? And most pastors are phlegmatics. Oh my God, this is, well, I, I hope y'all, I hope y'all learning stuff here. And so when you look at Elijah, who was strong one day and under the juniper tree the next day, depressed, and who was, who was powerful prophetically, who had an ear to God, but was given to bouts of depression. Why? Because things that don't turn out perfect can drive the melancholic into deep moodiness and depression. David, who absolutely knew how to hear from God and direct the course of Israel in worship, but was given to low spaces, poor choices, bad decisions. Listen, I'm going to take you all the way over into the New Testament. And many of you have heard about that. My God, my sister said Van Gogh was so creative. He cut off his own ear. Absolutely. Wow. And then you think about Thomas, who wasn't there. I need to see. I need to see. I can't believe this. So faith is a challenge for the melancholy. So we're going to walk through this. We're going to walk through this. We're going to walk through this. I will, Pastor John. We're going to walk through this because biblical characters right in front of you are displaying these temperaments. And so you need to know how did God work with them? How did they work with God? Now, those of us who are in the New Testament, we have the advantage because now we are given Holy Spirit to keep us in the truth and to help us with our weaknesses. Woo, I don't know about you, but I, I, I want to be fit for the master's use. I want to be fit for the master's use. I want to make me a best for the masters and this is the work of holy spirit not just to jump you not just to dance you not just to shout you not just to to preach you not just to sing you not just to usher you not just the altar worker you but to make you conform you into the image of jesus christ Woo. I got to go. <laughs> Woo! Come on now. Hallelujah. Here's the question. Am I fit? Glory. I didn't say, are you anointed? I didn't say, are you learned? I said, are you fit for the master's use? What do you mean, Bishop? Have you cleansed yourself? Are you allowing the holy work of Holy Spirit to sanctify the undesirable parts of your temperament. But have you forfeit the will of God? Whew, my God. Woo, I want to be fit for the master's use. I got to get out of here. I got to go. <laughs> Listen, May 26, 27, 28. You do not want to miss Pentecost weekend. Three days of Pentecost. Make Azusa great again. You don't want to miss it. If you are possibly able to be in Detroit, those three days you want to make your way. I'll be telling you more about it. Hey, I got to get up out of here. But baby, all day today, I want you to be thinking about this lesson. Gotta go. Ooh, my.